So if we have a four kilogram object on top of an inclined plane, 35 degrees inclined with the horizontal, and the question is asking what is the acceleration of the block? This is now without friction still. What is A? So this problem introduces us to how do we deal with inclined plane situations. Okay, so we break the forces, all the forces on the uh, object, we break it down. Uh, the, the surface is pushing up on the object. That was called the what force? Normal force, right? And then we have the weight of the object that is down, uh, 4 times 9.8. Remember, the 4 is the mass. So you multiply that by 9.8, you get the newtons. That's uh, equal to 30, uh, 39.2 newtons. So the normal force is pushing up at an angle like this, and then the weight is down. And the block is going to accelerate down the incline, right? down the incline like this. So the acceleration of the block is this way. So the question is, find A. <clears throat> now, one thing that people don't understand, whenever we get to incline plane, we start, um, we, uh, the, the regular way is we start to tilt, uh, rotate our x, y axis this way. Um, and we deal with the rotated x, y axis. If anybody goes up to eventually linear algebra, you're going to learn that this is called rotation of axes. Okay? Uh, in linear algebra, they do this a lot. But people don't understand. Why, why are we rotating axes for this? We haven't done that before in that many problems. Let me show you now why we do that, which makes our life much easier. Let me try to do this problem without rotated axis. And I'll show you that it takes longer to solve the problem if, it's, uh, if you don't rotate the axis. If I don't rotate the axis, and, and here are my weights, here are my forces here, 39.2, and if I don't rotate the axis, let's say my axis are like this, x, y, so this is the regular x, y axis, with the y axis vertically up, x axis pointing this way means this way is positive, and the thing is accelerating down, right? So now I do some of the forces in the x direction is ma, x. Some of the forces in the y direction is ma, y. We break it down into the x component and the y component. And then along the x direction, which is this direction, what forces are there? Well, uh, the 39.2 is in the y direction. And then the uh, normal force, we got, we, we got to uh, find out what angle that is right there. And then we're going to break up the normal force into its two components, vertically up and horizontal. Well, you can argue if this is 35, you can make a little geometrical picture here. If this is a horizontal and this is the inclined plane, this is 35, right? If that's 35, then this piece here must be a complementary angle to that, which is uh, 55. And then this piece here is 35. OK. So now we break up the normal force into its components. The x component of the normal force is going to be this one, and x. OK, so that's going to be. The normal force times cosine of, uh, times sine of 35, right? The opposite to uh, 35. So N sine of 35 is uh, the X component of the normal force. And that's equal to, that's the only force in the X direction on the block. That's equal to MAX. And we can actually put the M, the, uh, the M is 4 kilograms. And then in the y direction, you have this component here. Let's, let's erase this here a second. The normal force is this one. And then this thing here is ny. 
So ny, that's equal to n cosine 35. And then the, the weight is negative 39.2 is equal to 4ay. Now, is any one of these acceler accelerations zero? Is ax zero or is ay zero? Let's see. Now, this guy here, this block, is going to accelerate how? It's going to accelerate down the incline, this direction. So the total acceleration that it's experiencing is actually comprised of uh, AX and AY, right? So if this is the total acceleration, it has two components, AX, AY. So actually the answer to that is none of them are zero. AX, there is a sum number, and AY is sum number. After we solve these two equations to get the, our final answer, the, what's the question even asking? Find A, right? Find the total A. So after we get AX and AY, we're going to have to do AX squared plus AY squared. Then we're going to have to square root it. None of these uh, 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 Newton's law problems ever ask you just for AX or just for AY. They always ask, what is the acceleration, the total acceleration? They're not interested in just AX and AY. So after we get AX and AY, we're going to have to then uh, do that. So what is the answer here? Well, uh, we have here. Uh, N sine of 35 is, uh, oh, you know what? I should have done the opposite here uh, because um, the 39.2 actually wins, doesn't it? The thing accelerates down and to the right. So 39.2, remember how I was telling you with the elevator problem that I prefer to do it so that uh, if the AY is down, the 39.2 beats the uh, NY, so I should write this opposite. I usually set it up so that the weight that wins is positive, and then the weight that loses is negative. And then you have 4AY. Okay, so how, how can I solve this now? Well, I can say here, uh, N is equal to um, 4 AX over uh, sine of 35. And I could substitute that into that N. Thirty-nine point two minus four ax. Uh, so I substituted. I solved for n in that equation. I substituted it for uh, the n in this equation. Then I have four ax um, cosine thirty-five over sine thirty-five. Um, actually, it seems like we're at a dead end because uh, with this equation, you can't solve for ax or ay. It's just still two unknowns. Um, is it, are we pretty much at a dead end here? And then after we get the AX and AY, we're going to have to do AX squared plus AY squared. Square root of that is the A. So you see, we've made a real simple problem much harder than it has to be.